Hello, this is Greg Allison from Green Grace Garden and Worm Farm coming to you with a story about edible trees. They're trees that you can eat. You saw me talk one time about edible pine. I was talking about winter wild edibles. Well, it just so happens that there's a number of trees you can eat, <laughs> including most of the trees in the family of the pine tree. Now, uh, I always talk a lot about wild edibles, the weeds and the trees you can eat. So we're going to focus more on the trees this time. I'm always here to try to help you to survive, thrive, and stay out of this hive. That's the proposition of this channel. In that accord, I talk about wild edibles, wild foraging, medicinals. I talk about things that you can grow and how to grow them without going to the store to buy supplies. That's the key difference in me teaching you how to grow stuff. And I also teach you about medicinals you can grow in your garden, like turmeric and garlic, which I'll go more into the medicinal properties of those in the future. Now, with all wild edibles, I will have to tell you a disclaimer that you know there are a lot of good things in the forest that you can eat a lot of things are good for you but always make sure you can perfectly identify the plant before you eat it uh, if you don't know what the plant is absolutely check with a local expert also I'm not a doctor so I'm not prescribing anything I'm just telling you what people say you can use and do all that said behind me is a maple tree now, a lot of people are not aware that even in the south you can make syrup from maples yes you can tap these I might do that for the future video maybe this spring but it's fall now and most of you should know what maple leaves look like. Well, I got two ginormous maple trees. These trees were put out when I first came on this place. And back then were tiny little trees. Look how big they are. <laughs> that one is huge. Any tree that's a foot around is big enough to tap. And so I've got, this is two different species of maple here. But everyone should know this characteristic leaf. Looks like the, the leaf on the Canadian flag, right? Except it's not red, eh? <laughs> uh, there are red maples and this actually I do have red maples in the back now I've also done a video showing you how to eat from the maple seeds that the maple seeds I said eat your helicopter eat, eat your maple eat your helicopters well here I'm gonna say eat your trees <laughs> now look at the bark maple trees are typically have kind of a, a broad loose thin bark you see that bark you know it's kind of thin shell crackly loose cracky that's pretty typical of most maple trees the one over there is a little different in that regard but you can tap these trees the box elder is also a maple now its leaves are different I'll show you that in the future but the cool thing is you can actually make syrup from these even here in the south and these each of these segments are big enough here they're over a foot so I could put syrup buckets all over this tree <laughs> but even better you can eat the camium, the living inner bark of these trees, just like I showed on the pine video. You can just get back in behind the bark, if you cut a limb, and skin it just inside where the tissue is pliable. And that pliable tissue, right before you get to the wood, right just past this outer bark, the inner bark is all edible. And it's very good on a maple tree. There are several species of trees that you can eat the inner bark from. There's some that you don't want to eat the inner bark from. So you can eat the bark from poplar, aspens, and of course many pines, white pines especially, slippery elm. In fact, you can take the bark from the poplars, aspens, uh, and white pines and make a flower out of them. And it's kind of a sweet flower, and uh, it's good to, to use. Uh, you can make breads with it, I suppose, but mainly thickening soups and, and things like that but it's, it's high in starches, so I guess you can make a bread from those. And you should be able to do the same with maple since it's such a sweet wood. Willow, you can take willow and scrape and eat raw, uh, or you can uh, put it in the strips and make it like spaghetti and, and do it in the flour. Now, I've also done a video from willow tree. Maybe I'll walk back to one here in a minute. Uh, pine, again, the inner bark uh, is good, and the sap. You see, uh, the natives used to eat the sap. And pine, inner bark, and sap are very highly rich in vitamins A and C. So if you eat those in the wintertime, it'll prevent scurvy. And you can make spaghetti <laughs> out of the bark by stripping it. Uh, or of course, you can make flour used to thicken soups and stews. Uh, of course, pines have a lot of edible stuff. You can eat pine nuts and some pine cones, especially the male pine cones. And sassafras, of course, you can eat the roots. And uh, you can eat uh, the green twigs on sassafras. But there are some trees you don't want to eat. I'm going to show you one in a moment. You don't want to eat cherry. And there are certain fruits because they're high in cyanides. Any plant that's real high in cyanides, I'd be very careful with like stone fruits. 
Uh, so again, the aspens, sleeper elm, the uh, maple, pines, they're all good to eat. So let me show you what cherry looks like. Cherry looks different when it's older and when it's young. This is a young cherry tree. Look at that bark. You see it's got these stripes going that way. That's pretty typical of a young cherry tree. Now look at the leaves. Now you can eat the cherries, you just don't want to eat the seeds. You cannot eat the leaves of a cherry tree. As I understand it, I believe now this had cherries on it, but I guess the birds found them. <laughs> yeah, this tree will make a lot of cherries one day. It did have cherries. I used to have these two ginormous black cherry trees behind my house. And uh, I used to always climb them on my deck and eat the cherries. I had quite a few. And I really, really enjoyed them. But the problem with the cherry tree is just highly rich in cyanides. Uh, and therefore it's toxic. The leaves are toxic. Everything about a cherry tree, except the cherry fruit, is toxic. Do not eat cherry. So let me show you real quick. Uh, one thing about the tree so you'll know that even when you cut them sometimes that inner bark stays alive for a long time what I'm doing is I'm walking back around the back of my house to show you actually a cherry tree that was cut that uh, fell down a couple years ago and when it fell it was, it was right on top of my washroom here and it kind of messed the reef up a little bit so we cut it up we cut this tree up last fall, sometime in the autumn. Now this section here has no roots in the ground. It's just been laying here for many, many, many months. And yet, there is still living tissue in this tree. See, it's trying to sprout. It's sprouting leaves from that living tissue. It's trying to survive, thrive. Maybe it'll try to put down roots. I won't have to roll over because I plan to make cherry lumber out of it. So I got a long log here. I got a long log upstairs. Fortunately, that's cut short there. But there's still some roots in the ground when the trunk fell over, and she's trying to regrow cherry tree here. But look at this bark. A full-grown cherry tree has a bark that looks way different. You see that? It's funny how when they're young, it's got that stripes that runs this way, but when they get older, it breaks up into a coarser bark. But it is a cherry tree. It's the same species, exactly the same species as what I showed you earlier. You know, look, look at that wood. See how dark that is? That's why I want to cut this wood up. I need to get it to a sawmill. Here's another cherry log. So it's amazing how long that cambium layer can survive after you cut a tree. So just remember, when you need firewood, if you're out in a survival situation, and if you're cutting any green trees for any purpose, uh, like when I built my log barn here, I stripped all that cambium off because uh, that living tissue would rot and, and it could cause rot. So I actually stripped it off. I didn't eat it, but I stripped off a whole lot of food without knowing it. <laughs> so the bottom line is there's a lot you can eat in the forest. There is a lot that you can eat in the weeds and trees. And you hear me talk about that a lot on this channel. And I've just went into that at further depth. I just told you. There are several species of trees you can eat. So right here, my friends, there's a lot of food. There's no point to starve. If you pay attention to Green Greg's, if you watch my channel, I teach you how to grow food. I teach you how to forage. I tell you where to go to buy your seeds and to buy long-term food storage. So if you're a watcher of this channel and hits the fan, you shouldn't starve. And if somebody comes and takes everything you got, you still ought to be able to go out in the woods and get by for a while. Hide your seeds, though. That's a lot easier to hide than cans of soup. <laughs> hide your seeds. You see my video about seeds of survival? Yeah, the Indians on the Trail of Tears, the Native Americans, hid their seeds and hid them well. And they highly treasured them. See that video and why they did that? Because those are extremely valuable in bad times, worth more than any money. When it comes to survival, seeds are crucial. So, oh yeah, I'll walk it back here to the willow tree. So, that's why you should go to True Leaf Market and stock up on seeds while you can. There may not be a market available in the near future. If the grid goes down, what you got is all you got. So you better have to be ready. In the same uh, venue, go to prepwithgreg.com. You can get $100 off a four-week supply of long-term storage, 25-year storage food. And that's an amazing deal. <laughs> it's like a third off nearly. 
buy as much as you can. And if you don't use it now, that'd be you know, it's a freedom of inflation, that'd be worth a lot of money down the road. And if you used it as a trade good. So I've got willow tree here, a little bitty one. I got a big one right here. Like I said, if you know Willow, Willow's your friend. <laughs> you might also know I, I have a friend named Willow, which you might have seen on my uh, flea market video before last, <laughs> a couple weeks ago. <laughs> so I had her in mind when I said that in my previous Willow video. Now, same thing, Willow bark is also eatable, edible, but so are the leaves. You can actually eat these, but they are bitter because they're medicinal. It's got the same acid that you got to find in aspirin. So, yeah, it's not the food you're going to eat a lot of, but you can't eat well of these as food. No, I wouldn't eat too many of them, because it might have the same effect as OD on aspirin. I wouldn't eat but just a few. But it will alleviate pain. It's an analgesic. <laughs> pain killer. Just like I mentioned, so is uh, wild lettuce. Powerful analgesic. Even goldenrod, which I've just talked about, is an analgesic. So my friends, when I tell you you're going to eat the weeds and the trees, I'll show you how to do it. But just remember, if you don't know the plant, absolutely don't partake of it. Because there's a lot of plants that are good for you, a lot of plants that taste good, and a lot can kill you. And that, my friends, green bar. Those big leaves are going to be kind of tough, but that's also edible. <laughs> I think you could probably eat oak. And we'll, we'll talk about acorns this fall. I'm trying to show you as many videos as I can now on wild edibles. I was going to stretch that out, but given what's coming at us in our society, I thought it was important that I pick up the pace on the wild edible videos and I show you more. My wild edibles and more wild medicinals right now. Because I don't know if there will be an internet a year from now. Six months from now, I just don't know. Maybe. I hope so. hope our life goes back to normal and lasts a long time. Let's pray that it does. But just in case, don't be scared, be prepared. Don't panic, just get ready. Never panic, it don't serve you. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for watching. Have a great day.